Welcome to the SubTutorial series. In this tutorial, we will get to know the composition of the active panel and have a look at the different type of samples which have been added over the years. As you may know from previous tutorials, the SUP is a representative annual panel study of private households in Germany. The total population, therefore, are German households. The original sample started in 1984 in Western Germany. In 1990, it was expanded to include respondents from former Eastern Germany. Since then, several refresher samples have been added to ensure that the panel remains representative of the total population of private households in Germany. Several special samples have been added to allow for analysis of subpopulations that are of particular interest for social policy but that make up too small a share of the population to be represented adequately through proportional sampling. These include migration samples and samples in which particular family types, such as single mothers, have been oversampled. What we refer to as the active panel is the set of respondents interviewed in a particular year. This group is influenced by demographic changes within the initially sampled households. Naturally, deaths mean that respondents leave the sample. Moving abroad also means that respondents leave the sample, since the panel consists only of private households in Germany. If the respondents are unwilling to continue participating even after multiple attempts to interview them, they are classified as what we call definite final refusals. These are also dropped from the sample. Let's have a look at some of these demographic inflows into the active panel. Every child born into a sub-household automatically becomes part of the panel. Also, every person who moves into an established sub-household becomes part of the panel. An example of this might be an elderly parent who moves in with their child for care reasons or novel partners after a divorce. When a member of a sub-household moves out and establishes or joins another household, all members of this household are also asked to participate in the panel. The typical example here are grown-up children who leave the parental household. This way we try to follow all our respondents throughout their lives and through all the households they ever lived in. For each sampled household, the SEP provides information on the household and the individual level. The household questionnaire, which covers all information on the household level, is completed by the household head, typically the person who feels most qualified to provide this information. Once a household head has been chosen, interviewers try to achieve continuity by having the same respondent provide the household level information every year. In addition to household level information, the survey also provides individual level information on each adult household member. If there are children in the household who are below the age of 10, one of the parents will be asked to provide proxy information on the child. Children who are aged 11 or older are interviewed themselves provided that the parents have given their consent. This way, there is information on all individuals living in the household. If a household member has died, the individuals still living in the household are asked to provide information about the last period of the respondent's life. More information on the particular instruments which are used for these different groups is provided in our tutorial on instruments. Let's now have a brief look at the type of samples which have been added over the years. Here you can see the development of various subsamples at the level of adult household members. As you can see, the first wave contained two samples, the initial sample for Western Germany and a migrant sample containing foreign workers. In 1990, a sample for Eastern Germany was added. The initial wave of this sample had the highest response rate in the sub history. In 1994, another migration sample was added. The sample covered migrants who had come to Germany over the previous 10 years in which the survey had been running so far. To correct for panel attrition and to increase the total sample size, two refresher samples were then added in 1989 and in 2000. In an attempt to better represent the upper end of the income distribution, a high income sample was added in 2002. The innovation sample was introduced in 2006. Between 2010 and 2011, three samples were added focusing on particular family types, including low-income families, families with multiple children, and single-parent households. After another smaller refresher sample in 2012, two special migration samples were introduced to be able to represent immigration to Germany between 1995 and 2009. 
The last two samples were added to represent refugees who arrived in Germany between 2013 and 2015. Currently, we are working on a lesbian, gay and bisexual sample and we will soon add another sample of high wealth individuals. We hope to have given you a better idea of the composition of the sample and how it has developed over time. If you want to find out more about how we keep the panel representative despite all these subsamples, you might want to watch the video on our weighting strategy. Or if you want to see how the data is structured, you might want to continue with our data structure video. Thanks for watching.